Adene and President of Harvest Point Ministries and Pastor James Whitley, Vice President of Harvest Point Ministries. Today our show is going to be talking to pastors who are in the vineyard. We want to get to know more about them, about the ministries, and also about the Great Commission the Lord Jesus has given all of us. Thank you, pastors, for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So, how are you? Do it. <laughs> Great. Glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's get to know a little bit more about you, about who you are in your ministry. My name is Pastor Henry Odene, and the ministry is Harvest Point Ministry. We are based in Houston, Texas, and of course, we've got locations in Africa, Republic of Benin, and Nigeria. Wow, thank you. And you, sir? I'm James Wheatley. Okay. And uh, I'm vice president, of course. And uh, we have worked together for many years now in the ministry in Africa and in America. Wow, so you've visited Africa? Yes. Oh, okay. We'll get to talk more about that. <laughs> okay, so I heard you talk about the ministry and traveling international. That's right. Tell us a little bit more about international. Yeah, we. Aside from the fact that we're based in Houston, we have an uh, international school of ministry. We have established schools of ministry in the Republic of Benin. We have eight schools of ministry in the Republic of Benin. And then we have satellite campuses in Nigeria. The difference between school of ministry and satellite campus, the schools of ministry in the Republic of Benin, they are run by our people and they are under the Harvest Point Ministry. But satellite campuses in Nigeria, uh, there are churches and individuals who have schools of ministry on their own. We give them the material, the resources to set up their own campus. And all we just do is set, uh, when it is time to test, we send the test from here. When it is time to graduate, we, give, we go to Nigeria for the graduation. And the School of Ministry, the content of the School of Ministry, uh, it's, uh, it's not our product per se. It's a product of International School of Ministry California. What they did was they collected teaching materials from generals in the ministry, like Rehan Bonke, collected teaching of Rehan Bonke on massive evangelism. Who else can teach mass evangelism other than Rehan Bonke? Exactly. They collected his teaching in video, he, he, in English, and interpreted in various languages, 58 various languages. But the languages we, we are using in Africa, Yoruba language, every language which is common in the Republic of Benin, Togo, and Volta region of Ghana, uh, French, so English, Yoruba, French, and every. Wow, that's amazing. That is reminding me of what our Lord Jesus probably wants. He wants his message to reach across. Exactly, that's across. true. Well, how, what do you think about reaching across and having the communication with the languages? Uh, the introduction to uh, the language is, is uh, I don't speak Yoruba. Exactly, so you are <laughs> an English communicator. I'm an English communicator, mm -hmm. and when we travel to uh, Africa, mm -hmm. uh, they, in Nigeria, they speak English yes. because they're a British colony. Yes. And uh, we have to adjust to that. The first thing I had to learn to do, slow down. Yes, <laughs> you will talk faster than that. <laughs> That's true. And, uh, but uh, we've accepted that, and that's good. So uh, I have no problems communicating, but I have Pastor Henry that will interpret for me when I need that. So it's a wonderful Thank you, idea. Sir. So tell us a little bit more about the DVD format of the, of the program and how you equip these teachers in the local communities. Yeah, thank you very much. That's interesting because uh, as, uh, the min our ministry has a, we have a slogan. Our slogan is uh, to do, pick up those things that, that big churches and big ministries overlook. Mm. Uh, and, and we also handle those things that are too big for small ministries. And part of those things we discovered in the course of our trip to Africa that there are a lot of pastors in Africa, in the rural areas in particular, they have zeal for the work, yes. but they do not have sufficient knowledge. Uh, Paul Apostle said, I appreciate the zeal. Yes. He said, but their zeal is without knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's nothing bad in having zeal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But we will now discover that it's important to to them, give them skill to be able to teach their congregation very well. The Bible did not tell us. Jesus Christ said, go and make disciples yes. of the world. But when Miriam Bonke, another great evangelist, yes. when they carry a big crusade, a lot of people give their life to Christ. Mm -hmm. At that level, they are the level of believers. Yes. However, they need to be taught. Mm. They need teachers on the ground yes. to teach them, grow them and mature them to the level of disciples indeed. Oh, I like that. that is where Harvest Point Ministry is coming. Mm -hmm. And the schools of the seminaries in Africa, most of them are in the cities. Mm. So what is the fate of the pastor who speaks his local language very well, yes. who reads his Bible in his local language, who preaches to his local congregation in the native language, yes. who will have to be taken from his village to the city, yes. to a seminary where the medium of instruction is English. How do you cope with such a thing? It's exclusive. It, it, it takes you away from who you are. So we have in conjunction with the International School of Ministry, we bought this curriculum in these languages and we've taken the School of Ministry, the seminary per se, to them in their rural area, in their village. So we are not taking the pastor from his family, we are not taking this pastor from his farm, because some of these pastors are also they double as farmers. Yes. You are not taking them from the socio-cultural environment they are used to. Yes. So the school is there. And we have a television set and a DVD player. So you slot in the DVD player, it shows you Ria Bonke, Joyce Myers, Ray Comfort. They teach in English and it's interpreted in their native language simultaneously. And they receive their handout in their native language. They do their test in the native language. So at the end of the day, you have pastors trained with the, the same curriculum used in seminary in their native language. I so, so much that's appreciate it. it. You know why? Because training makes people equipped. That's right. I love this this platform that you are introducing because it gives them a voice in their own language. That's right. It gives you power in your own language to communicate. And the, those that are left behind due to communication barriers brought together. So I love that you have reached in the community and also empowering them That's right. with great teaching tools. Right. Okay, so let's talk to you a little bit more, Pastor James Whitney. Yes. So in this, um, what would you say are the great benefits to reaching people or pastors in those communities in their own language? Well, number one, uh, in reaching people for Christ, it's one-on-one, -on -one, yes. definitely. So uh, if we can talk to them uh, in a, a clear, concise manner yes. and in their own language, and that's the key, uh, is to, uh, to develop a relationship yes. with the people so that they understand what you're saying mm -hmm. and that and they turn around and accept Christ as a benefit from that. So that culminates in our mission for going to Africa. I like that. That's powerful. So tell us a little bit about your training facilitate status. And um, you mentioned earlier when we were talking before this started, and you there's something you shared with me about the Ethiopian, you know. That's right. I, I was amazed by that. Yeah, that's interesting. And it's an encouraging uh, Bible statement. <laughs> The Ethiopian eunuch, definitely from from what you deduce from with the Bible, must be a wealthy person. Yes. He traveled from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. That's a far On a pilgrimage. Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, he had the Bible in his hand, Torah then, the Old Testament. Okay. And he washed it. He was going back to Ethiopia, almost empty. To him, he had accomplished what he went for, but there was a void in him. There was an emptiness in him. So the Holy Spirit then commissioned Philip, go and join the child. For him to have had a child, probably a limousine, if you... In that time. Yeah, that time. Yeah. So go and join his child. I see this Ethiopian man. I pity him. 
He's going back to Ethiopia, wow. celebrating his pilgrimage, but he's not accomplished anything. Em- his empty. Yet. Yeah, empty. So Philip went and he taught him, mm-hmm. gave him, opened up his understanding. And the same portion of the Bible he read and did not make any meaning to him. After the teaching, he read it and he said, wow, his eyes got open. Then he said, that's water there, that's river there. What else stop you from baptizing me? Go ahead and baptize me. And I'm sure in the course of that, he gave his life to Christ. He probably must be the number one African to be baptized. Yes, he was. So the tissue is if he had not had a teacher, he said, How do you, do you understand this? He said, How can I understand when I don't have a teacher? So we are raising teachers in the rural areas to grow people. Yes. The fact is this. Language is important as a means of communication because the Bible said an inward conviction is what a Christian needs yes. for outward confession. You get convinced inside you that you need a savior, then you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord. Say that again, sir. So any inward conviction yes. that will lead to an outward confession. Love that. Yes, so, so you need to speak to this people in their language, then they will have a better understanding of the gospel. They will appreciate the need for a savior. And they will say, I see, oh, then go ahead and baptize me. So we are raising teachers in the rural area to develop people from, take them from the status of mere believers to become disciples of Christ. I love that. He said, mere believers to disciples of Christ. Christ. Yes. powerful. That is profound. And with that story, uh, Pastor Henry is telling about Philip, we still see after those many years in the Bible, we still see the influence of Christianity in that area. In that area. Because of that one seed that was sown. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. So teaching is important. It is. I'm hearing the importance of teaching, the importance of breaking down the language barriers. That's right. Okay. Tell us more a little bit about, you shared earlier about the historical feat that has happened in your ministry. With the government. I love it. <laughs> Amen. Um, we give glory to God for what the Lord is doing in the ministry. As I said, uh, we identify areas that are neglected. Uh, one of those things uh, we discovered was that uh, is that Africans in diaspora, for instance, you have people who come into America, they have children. They want their grandchildren to come and help them take care of these children. Yes. And in the course of their stay in America, part of the benefits they derive is the fact that they, they want to be citizens of this country. Yes. And if you qualify to be a citizen of America, one good thing about this country is that nothing stops you. Yes. English is your first language, which is number one. We all come in here, we want to speak English. It's important. I encourage it. However, there are some who are probably some of our grand- grandmothers and grandfathers who speak English, but they may not be able to take the citizenship test wow. in English language. So our ministry have discovered their challenge and have come immediately to their aid. So what we did was we acquired from the immigration department and they said yes that america has made it easy if you are 65 years and above you can take the citizenship test 100 questions in your native language but it is up to the ministry to now do the translation and take the classes so we went ahead we translated the 100 questions citizenship test into yoruba language and we established a class where the elder is coming we teach them, we train them, and we follow them out for the exam, for the test. So the examiner will ask the question in English. Yes. We will translate it to Yoruba to the candidate. The candidate will give us the answer in Yoruba, and we will say the answer. Well, there's no way we we'll to tamper with the answer. We we'll say it just exactly as he said it. And we fielded some candidates, and we are proud to say that most of the candidates we fielded pass 
They are citizens of America today and they have the benefit of two languages. They speak English yes. and they speak their native language. Glory to God. Amen. 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 I love wonderful. this. This is wonderful. This is a great achievement for those who are coming here, like you said, our grandmothers, yes. our grandparents. That's right. They want to be part of our community. Amen. Amen. We That's have true. to involve them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, tell us a little bit about your ministry, all the things that you're doing in the ministry, and also what you would like us to know more about the school of ministry. Uh, the, the school of ministry in particular, uh, we <clears throat> encourage people, for instance, we established, we, we commissioned and formally started the school of ministry in Houston because we appreciate the fact that pastors, most pastors, a number of them are part-time pastors, they do circular work and they do the ministry. So time is not on the side of pastors to go to the four walls of the seminaries and take classes. So we have every Thursday we run a school of ministry in three different languages. We have it in English, we have it in Yoruba, we have it in French every Thursday where pastors and church leaders can come in and take classes in various subjects, New Testament survey, Old Testament survey, homiletics, the act of preaching and uh, leadership and biblical counseling, uh, 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 counseling, regular counseling, counseling in the circular world yes. is different from biblical counseling. Uh, a, a person could be a good married counselor in the circular world, may, may have gone through three divorce. Yes. But if he's certified to be a counselor, he can say counsel, counsel people. But biblical counseling is entirely different. It's more spiritual and it requires proper training. So we have classes in various classes in that. So we have the International School of Ministry curriculum here in Houston every Thursday 7 p.m. We have the classes and it's open to all church leaders in three languages. Yoruba, English and French. Okay. So we have Yoruba, English and French. French. And you're gonna towards the end let us know where and how to contact you. That's right. those. Now when you said something about the busy pastors, the pastor's life usually in the United States is full full time. So they it's a full time work and full time um, pastoring. So sometimes they take breaks and activities what do you do for fun what are your activities uh, pastor Whitley with your family with you with, with how tell, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself your, your family and, and, and everything else you know background uh, mm-hmm. I started in the ministry preaching okay. uh, at 15 years old wow. <laughs> and uh, <Early. laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I've just uh, wrapped up my 60th Married anniversary. Oh, <laughs> praise God! <laughs> <laughs> but in that meantime, uh, we've uh, traveled. I've had uh, an experience in the airport, and I've had a lot of uh, broadcasting time. Okay. And uh, I did. Uh, you still do broadcasting? Uh, yes, I. Uh, I had my first telephone talk show okay. in Klamath Falls, Oregon. What is a telephone talk show? You you were on the phone? Yes. Oh my God. Yeah, talking to people, where pre jacking and all of that stuff. But anyhow, uh, <laughs> then as far as family is concerned, uh, I, uh, Marion and I have had uh, fifty-five foster children. Well. And, uh, Amazing. <laughs> and then uh, we've adopted three, okay. and we've lost one of them to cancer, but uh, we still have the two going. Okay. And uh, we're interested in, in children and how uh, how we can help them to develop. But it's uh, it's been a lot of Pastor Henry and I met in the commercial field, and I know that he mentioned that mm-hmm. that uh, and pastors are busy. Wow. They're so, busy, and, and they need training, and that's what I love that you do. And it's see that you need to be equipped, and that's what you provide. Thank you, sir. Sir, what about you? Yeah, my background is marketing. I actually did marketing and the polytechnic, and uh, I have a diploma in marketing. And uh, apart from that, when 
I went into engineering at a time because of my interest in adventure. Yeah. And uh, I started a company called Henry Class Nigeria Limited, where we fabricate and produce vegetable oil expression equipment and my area of specialty then was palm kernel oil espella i would build the equipment got the blueprint from a company in india and we got a license to produce them in nigeria and i was so very successful in the year so much that the federal government of nigeria has my equipment on their stand at international trade fairs but at the point the lord called me to full-time ministry with no regret i went to the apostolic church student fellowship of nigeria conference in Ilori, and in the course of preaching after the preaching i retired to my hotel and i was praying and the lord told me it's time for you to do my work full-time so it took a process i disengaged from full-time businessman to a uh, full-time pastor and that's where half, uh, harvest when this now became a uh, uh, henry class nigeria limited yes. now became harvest point ministry what an awesome story it encourages those of us out there who are upcoming pastors it tells you a story both of them started from somewhere and they got equipped and when the lord said move into the grinder right. they did Amen. this yes. is awesome so that's what you're equipping us with you're equipping leaders of the bible teachers who would come in and learn and be part of the international school of ministry so before we leave let's get to talk to you about how we can reach you how someone who's interested to partner or become part of the the trained um, pastors can reach you tell us all the ways we can get connected. Okay, and uh, number one, we have our website. Our website is www.harvestpointministry.org. Uh, and then, of course, those who are interested in the classes in Yoruba, we have www.dakuduro.org. Harvest Point Ministry has a lot of information about any Yoruba classes. And, of course, uh, my phone number is 713 3278-713-231-3278. If it is the school of ministry you are interested in, for those in Africa, you can set up a school of ministry. You can get in touch with us and sponsor a school of ministry. Because those are the things we need to take care of. There are people there in the rural area. The zeal is there. But of course, they need the skill. The Bible said Jesus Christ gave us five ascension gifts. He gave us the gift of apostles. They are to guide us. Doctrinal guidance. He gave us the gift of prophet. They are to give us spiritual guidance. He gave us evangelists. They are to gather. He gave us pastors. They are to grow. They give us teachers. They are to ground. Oh, wow. So it's all GGG. God yeah. guide, gather, grow, and ground. Wow. These people this are there, powerful. but they need to be equipped yes. to perform. So feel free to contact me anytime. And those of you, if you speak Hausa, I am very fluent in Hausa language. If you speak Tree, I am fluent in Tree language. If you speak Fanti, those two languages are Ghana, Ghanaian language. I speak Fanti very well. Of course, I speak Yoruba very well. And of course, you can judge that I can speak English yes. to a certain extent. I just love this. I love that you can be international languages, so you're both local and community. That's right. So as a local community, you're reaching the people. And by the way, I visited Ghana before. I visited Wonderful. Kumasi. Beautiful place. Beautiful place. I was in Ghana for eight years. I went to school in Ghana. Wow. I went to Takwa Middle School, and I went to Bebeni Secondary School before I came back to Nigeria. I love Ghana, by the way. Beautiful so place. Beautiful place. <laughs> and I, earlier you mentioned about Benin Republic. Republic of Benin. And that's the focus of our ministry now because the Lord led us there. Yes. When we were going to Africa, we prayed and fasted for seven days. And the seven days the Lord told us the Republic of Benin. You know, one thing about the Republic of Benin, mm -hmm. people forget is that it is the only, okay, one of the few countries mm -hmm. where the government recognized one day set aside for celebration of just like you have christmas day mm -hmm. they have voodoo day oh, wow. 
Whoa. Go to the the work needs to be done yes, there. Yes, yes. And then if you go to, well, I know of uh, 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 the embassy yes. in Nigeria, if you enter the embassy of uh, Republic of Benin, Nigeria, right at the reception, they have written boldly, welcome to Republic of Benin, credo of Futu. I have nothing oh, against no. it, we but Christians that. should work we hard towards that that's, area. That's an area. Uh, of course, of definitely. So, and then aside from the schools of ministry, we have adopted two churches there. Okay. We have a church in Boje, okay. and we have a church in Borikusi, and we have one in Afraku. We adopted this church as our children, baby churches, mm -hmm. and we all the project they have in the Republic of Benin, we, we take care of forty percent of them of it, and we encourage them to bring the four. They, we take care of sixty percent, and they take care of forty percent. We're going to have Pastor Henry Odenehu back, and we're going to do a little bit more. But the next time he's here, we're going to do a Q and A live session. So get your questions ready. Those of you who want to be part of the ministry, you really want to be equipped. Listen to what he said today. The equip, equipping yourself for ministry is the key. He's talked to you about key areas of focus of evangelism. So let 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 as you as you listen to the messages today, let God lead you. Contact their numbers. Any parting words for me, Pastor Whitley? I know you've visited Africa. Tell me what you've <laughs> eaten. What's your favorite food? <laughs> oh, my favorite food. Yeah, in Nigeria. Uh, and they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a is plant. It's a plant. But it's uh, it's what somewhat it like it's it's, 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 it's no, it's finished. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, it's ugu. Ugu uh, is a vegetable. Yes. yes. Yeah, oh, vegetable. you love the vegetable soup. Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna make it, you one too. It's <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Only the Africans know how to they make it. They know how to make it. Well, we'll make it and we'll bring it on set for you next time. So thank you so much, Pastor. It was a great, great, great God honor. Bless you. Thank you, bless you. Thank you so it's much. Thank, thank you so much. God bless you for the work you're doing. Thank you for watching Behind the Pulpit. Till next time, team success. Bye-bye.